Hello and welcome to Data or City Talks, a podcast where we discuss with industry leaders and experts how they have built their careers around data. I'm your host, Shannon Kemp, and today we're talking to Julie Smith, the Director of Data and Analytics at Alation, about her career. Hello and welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp and I'm the Chief Digital Officer at Dataversity. And this is my career in data, a Dataversity Talks podcast dedicated to learning from those who have careers in data management to understand how they got there and to be talking with people who can help make those careers a little easier. To keep up to date in the latest in data management education, go to dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. And today we are joined by Julie Smith, the Director of Data and Analytics at Alation. And normally this is where a podcast host would read a short bio of the guest, but it's your bio that we're here to talk about. Julie, hello and welcome. Hello. Nice to be here. So Julie, could you reiterate your title and what is it that you do? So um, I'm Director of Data Analytics at Alation. So um, you may be aware that Alation is a data catalog firm. So the software that we actually produce is in the business of supporting data professionals um, by helping them you know, access the data they need, et cetera. But I actually represent internally to Alation who our customers would be. Um, I look after the internal data needs of Alation as a company. So servicing the requirements of the different parts of the organization in terms of dashboards, um, data science, uh, data governance, and other, other aspects such as that. Um, so yeah, that's who we, what we are, what we do. Be nice. So tell me, Julie, is this what you dreamed of when you were a little girl? What you wanted to grow up to be a data a director of data and analytics, or what did you want to do when you grew when you were young? <laughs> when I was young, I, I don't think data and analytics was a thing. I think data was a thing. Um, but I think that hasn't is not as, as commonplace as it is now, certainly. Uh, when I w was growing up, I wanted to be an astronaut. Oh. Um, I, even though I, I'm, I'm British, I'm, I live in the UK, but um, grew up in the UK, I still had dreams of, of being an astronaut. So um, the fact I'm now an elationaut, as we call them, um, that's all they had to offer me to come and, and work here. But um, yeah, I, I knew I always liked science and, and things like that. And I actually did a degree in physics with space science and technology. So um, my daughters call me a rocket scientist to their friends. Um, but so really my, my education was geared to science. It was my, my degree was geared to science. Um, and then somehow I sort of trans tra made the transposition into, into data a little bit after that. How did you get into that? What, what were you, um, how did you transition out of college and with this degree and, so, and what kind of roles did you have? Yeah. yeah so um, when I, um, uh, was at university I was actually sponsored by a company um sort of worked for them in, in the holidays between years um and the, you know the space industry in the UK was was not incredibly healthy back then um and there was a bit of a demise there and otherwise so when I graduated I sort of looked around for, for you know suitable um uh, you know uh, employment and uh, I came across at a job fair um the opportunity to join as a graduate within an IT area for an insurance company near to where I, I, I grew up. Um, and it was one that they weren't so much bothered about you having had a computer related degree, computer studies, computer science or anything. It was more about your aptitude. And so I went through various tests with them, et cetera, and, uh, and got selected and taken on. So I ended up in an IT department where data was very much started its life, I guess. Um, but it still wasn't really a thing there. Um, you know, it, this is where there were still mainframes knocking around in some of the departments and stuff. But, you know, and having personal computers in the offices was relatively new. Um, and, um, yeah, I worked in various different parts, looking at programming, looking at business analysis and similar and, and stuff. And, and then I found myself being asked to look after the implementation or a pilot for a tool set called SAP Business Objects. Well, it's now known as SAP Business Objects. Back then it was just Business Objects. Um, and um, the rest is history, really. Um, I got hold of the tool set, saw what it could do, um, saw what business intelligence could unleash with um, the business. And, and yeah, I just built on that um, to end up here, <laughs> ultimately. Ready to mingle with your fellow data governance practitioners? 
Join us in Washington, D.C. this December for the Data Governance and Information Quality Conference. Five days packed full of new knowledge, new friends, and new strategies are yours when you register at dgiq2022east.dataversity.net. So is it a, is, so that passion around science, is, is that an, uh, what made you want to get into the business of data products and get move that, make that transition to a company like Galatian? I think that um, when I picked up business objects and started using it, um, even when I, I liked science and otherwise, I've been a little bit of a geek or a nerd. I'm never too sure what the distinction is. Um, it, but I, I, a lot of roles in IT, a lot of roles with data and everything would be very much you're focused on the technology, you're focused on that. What really appealed to me about working with this tool set was the interaction with the business and understanding what their needs were, understanding how it could help them and, and, and how that could help drive them. And, it, and it, so it, because it straddled those two worlds and I do consider myself or I'm considered a people person, I think it really appealed to me that that ability to um, combine the, the understanding and the empathy you need to have for the business people and what they're trying to do and achieve with the technical knowledge that you need to try and implement and help them and, and, and solve their problems. Um, so yeah, I uh, um, did the, the work with business objects for a while, became a center of expertise um, for it and developed that within the company. Um, we, <laughs> I remember there was a day when we, um, we had particular problems to solve and so we recruited in consultants and I realized on that day I knew more than consultant did. So <laughs> I started thinking about it and um, I ended up um, um, going to work for a consultancy um, uh, in business intelligence and, and information management. Um, while I was there, I became a managing consultant. So looking after other consultants, performing consultancy, saw a range of different customers and challenges and industries um, related to, to what you do at Dataversity. I helped run the, the training department, teaching our, our customers how to use you know, the, the data environments that they'd been um, introduced to by ourselves, how to support it for themselves, become self-sufficient, how to design them. Um, I'm quite passionate about making sure people understand these things and, and, and can, can use it and, you know, to imbue them with the same enthusiasm that I feel for data. Um, and so, you know, worked through on there and, and was there for about 17 years, um, really showing my age now. And, <laughs> And um, and saw so many different aspects of stuff there, but then I decided, you know, my my life, um, where which was sporadically on the road, uh, I wanted to to change that, and so I found a a more local role, where I went to work for a financial company and actually set up their data and analytics practice. So I joined there, a couple of people uh, involved um, that were existing there, really took it on, built data warehouse. Data Marts, um, the, the business intelligence provision for them, later joined by data science team, um, started to get the data governance aspects up and running. Um, and that's when actually um, I became an Alation customer and oh. uh, liked the company so much. <laughs> but, uh, when I when I realized there was an opportunity to join them, I, I leapt at the chance. Oh, that's great. And I hear, uh, it, as you were talking, I heard so much, so much about the passion that was driving you, um, and that a unique skill set that you have, which is communicating. And and to uh, there's so many questions about how do I communicate to the business side, you know, from IT side, how do I bridge that gap? Was it just the passion that you let drive that, or is there anything that you did to uh, hone yeah. that skill? I think that. Um... Passion is part of it and enthusiasm. And when people see that you've got that passion and that drive, they, they you know, become engaged with it. Um, I think some of the other things were that um, the data can be scary. I, I mean, although data is very separate to IT now and it's, it's got its own function, so people still associate it with IT. And to business people who perhaps don't have a lack of knowledge, that lack of knowledge can be scary. They don't understand things. And, and we do have a, a definite... Um, a definite inclination towards developing new terms and and new trends and, and technologies and giving them um, uh, brands that are hard for people to understand and necessarily get into. And what I found was that if I if I could relate it to them in a way they, they could more easily understand or in terms that they understood, suddenly it was not a mystery anymore they could understand they could get on board um and they could feel that same enthusiasm because they suddenly felt you know i understand this 
Um, and I think it's a, a pitfall we sometimes we can fall into. It is is going into you know geek speak um, and terminology when actually the principles behind it are relatively straightforward if you just clear away the, the, the some of the jargon and, and get to the point and simplify it for people. Um, and I, I think that and, and just trying to understand them and listening to them and and hearing them as the SMEs of what they need to do um I think I think helped I think that's so key and so such a great answer to so many things right is listening and trying to understand them instead of presuming just demanding that they know something <laughs> understanding what they need <laughs> how they <Yeah>. need it <laughs> um so Julie, do you see the importance of data management and the number of jobs working with data increasing over the next 10 years or so? And why? I, I can't see it going any other way, to be honest. Um, you know, the, we're not getting any less data. Um, unless something tragic happens to the cloud, data is not going anywhere. You know, it's going to build up and build up. New data sources are coming around. And more and more businesses even now are starting to realize what they can do with data um you know they're, they're still unlocking the potential of it and what they can do so i see it yeah it's here to stay it's going to grow but other things other practices i think are going to become um more um more key i think that a lot of focus was been on, you know, the exploitation of the data. So getting the data in and then the dashboards and, and visi visi visibility of it. Data scientists were incredibly the in thing to, to go through and, and, and still are, you know, a, a huge asset in what they can produce. But I think roles such as data governance now um, and that area in particular, which quite often was seen as the realms of the big corporates, the banks, the investment firms where they need it for regulatory reasons. I think that that is something which is becoming much more commonplace in, in other areas now where they've realized that governance isn't purely about, you know, the ticking the boxes, the, the making sure that we're compliant. It's about actually making your data more usable, making it more, uh, the, putting the ability in it for people to use it and exploit it. And, and not just the data scientists and the data analysts, but your business users having more direct interaction with it because they have the certainty of what the definition of that data is they have the certainty of where to get the best source for that data they have the certainty of the trust in that data and the quality in that data so that's an area that i see becoming um much more firmly entrenched in many more organizations um, which is which is good to see with a robust catalog of courses offered on demand and industry leading live online sessions throughout the year, the Dataversity Training Center is your launch pad for career success. Browse the complete catalog at training.dataversity.net and use code DVTALKS for 20% off your purchase. Yeah, indeed, we're seeing very much the same thing. So is what advice would you get give to somebody who's looking to get into a career in data management and would it be different for a data governance role versus the data scientist um so i suppose it, it, it is different i i think the way i when i i look at um uh people when if I, i'm interviewing somebody and, and and look for things i look for two things generally speaking is aptitude and attitude aptitude when it comes to being a data scientist you know you, you obviously you, you like numbers you like you like data you can work through problems in that way you've got a mathematical mind um and i think that back um not so long ago you know if you wanted to when you're talking about educational routes from a um a traditional thing there wasn't much at university you could do or college in the us that perhaps um was specific to data science, but I, I'm amazed now at the the array of courses that people can go into straight out of, of school into to specialise in, in data and work with that. Um, and I think that's great. I think those courses are, are fantastic. What I would say is if you can combine uh, a course like that, if you want to go into do a course like that and, and do that and take that forward, it's brilliant. Do try and get some real world exposure though alongside it. Um, I know when we have interns at Alation, they come in and, and start working with the data and suddenly things aren't straightforward as, as it is in a, in a classroom and, and 
this data yeah. isn't what we were told this data is and <laughs> that value is not correct and uh, and etc and oh we've got to rely on other people to do things and stuff and it, and it gives you um it, it it gives you that it brings you back down to earth a little bit and understanding the challenges that you quite often face and um if you can get some exposure to it in the real world i'd say do that in from a data governance side of things um you know similarly you know i still think it's great if you can have a sort of technical aptitude to things because getting your hands dirty in the data to understand it etc is good from a data governance perspective i think there's more of a need to have those soft skills in terms of people and being able to communicate and and rally the troops in terms of the organization having data stewards on side with you and working with them and, and helping organize and manage that around um so i see that those sort of roles having more of the softer side of it being necessary don't get me wrong i'm not suggesting data scientists should be you know robots and um, they need to have feelings too and, and again the more empathy they can have for the problem they're trying to solve the better they might be at thinking about the patterns to look for but uh, i see that slight difference on those so then would a like a good project management uh training be helpful for a data governance certainly yeah because i think um you know the, they're going to have to, you know, as you progress through sort of the data governance types of roles, I mean, you might come in as a data governance analyst, in which case you're probably pretty much self-managing based upon someone else managing a project. Um, but as you sort of scale up and go more towards, you know, data governance lead and data governance management side of things, you will need to coordinate people across the piece. Um, but it's, I think the thing about data governance is it's, um, it's a program of work rather than a project because it doesn't cease it doesn't end there will be projects within it that you need to um that you need to, to to have a start and an end to get things rolling but it's that keeping the momentum going um projects have an end point data governance programs you've got to keep that rolling you've got to keep the improvement going you've got to keep your data quality monitoring carrying on you've got to keep people engaged and have those things in, in you know um happening regularly and not sort of weighing out um so yes project management but you've got to make sure it's something that, that looks at it as a program rather than end date in there well julie thank you so much for this interview and this and being participating in this anything else you want to add any additional plugs for elation going on anything exciting <laughs> happening there um lots of exciting things are always happening at elation um i have to say it is a fantastic place to work um it's uh i mean as i say you know the, the fact that one, uh, a lot of our uh, iconography is to do with space makes me feel a little bit like I've achieved my my childhood ambition. <laughs> but um, no, it's great. I mean, what I love about it is, you know, the diversity of the people I get to work with there. Um, you know, still working with all the different parts of the the you know the departments there. You know, sales, marketing, you know, finance and otherwise, etc. Um, and it's but it's great as a, a side part to that, not just to be working in a company where I get to work with great people, but the fact that the company is driven by helping people. With their data and, and as it's a passion of mine to to know that what we're producing albeit i'm not directly involved with the product itself although i do try and have some sway with it um, at least um you know i know that we're we're working towards that that greater good in terms of data and um you know servicing the people that would have been me out there and uh and desperate for guidance on how to use my data and you know how relation helps people do that and you can learn more at elation.com yeah elation.com and uh lots of resources on there my papers all sorts of things to find out more about us and uh if you uh yeah if you are already an elation customer then you know you know there's a community on there for people to talk about all sorts of uh, different um resources well, folks, I'm afraid that's all the time we have for today. Julie, thank you again so much for taking the time to chat with us today. And thank you to our listeners out there. If you'd like to keep up to date on the latest podcasts in the latest data management and education, you may go to dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Julie, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Dataversity Talks brought to you by Dataversity. Subscribe to our newsletter for podcast updates and information about our free educational articles, blogs, and webinars at dataversity.net forward slash subscribe.